Praise God, church. Amen. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burnt up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen. Praise God. What is the background to this? This is the famous scene up on Mount Carmel. What happens? What's the background story behind this? So you have the kingdom of Israel, which was ruled by David and then Solomon, and it was divided into two. Okay? So the northern kingdom remained Israel, and the southern kingdom become, became Judah. Now the northern kingdom had a king called as Ahab. Evil person. Evil guy. And at that point of time, the northern kingdom was being attacked by other nations, including Syria. So what did Ahab do? To strengthen his position, he went ahead and married a Canaanite queen. So Canaan was another country nearby who could provide support for uh, this country if somebody else attacked them. So he went ahead and married this lady called as Jezebel. Amen? Very famous lady. All of us know about Jezebel. Judas is one person whom we know, and on the female side of things, we know Jezebel. So all of us know about that. And so Ahab went ahead and married Queen Jezebel. And what did this queen do? Now Israel, as you know, started off with Jehovah being God. But when Queen Jezebel came in, she brought in practices from a different place, including Baal worship. Now Baal was the god of Canaan. He was the chief god. And you had abominable practices, including you needed to cut yourself to please him. Amen? And you had child sacrifices which were given. So it was bad medicine. So you have a bad king, an evil king, a self-willed king. And now you have a bad queen, a self-willed queen, both of them joining together on the northern kingdom of Israel. And what happens? They get into idolatry. So this nation is having a background of Jehovah, but slowly people leave Jehovah behind and they start going behind Baal because of the worship and the things surrounding that. They begin to worship Baal and Jehovah God being God Almighty who brought Israel out with the outstretched right arm through the wilderness becomes angry and stops rain from falling. And then uh, he sends uh, Elijah and Elijah goes and has an encounter with the nation and with the king Ahab. And he tells king Ahab, God is angry with you. Nothing is working in your land. You're not walking in obedience to what Jehovah God wants from you and from me. And therefore, he has withheld rain from falling here. Am I speaking to somebody watching online this morning? But the rain has been withheld in your life. The rain is not falling in your life this morning. God is saying, I want to change that. I'm about to do a miracle because the God of the mountains is still God in the valley. <laughs> Jehovah God says through Elijah that I have stopped rain. And this is because of the worship that is happening. And Elijah says, Israel, your God wants to bless you. Evangel family, your God wants to bless you. But you need to acknowledge that he is king of kings and lord of lords. And therefore, he calls all of those priests for a contest. An open match saying, uh, 400 of Baal and 400 of other prophets, you come on top of Mount Carmel. You give your sacrifices to your God. And if your God sends fire down from heaven and burns the sacrifice, we will believe that your God is the true God. But if my God, Jehovah, sends that fire down from heaven and burns the sacrifice, then Israel, then Evangel family, you and I would believe that King of kings and Lord of lords is one and one alone, and that is Jehovah God. Amen. And what happens? The contest begins. And all of them come. And the Baal, priests of Baal, they do their dances. They put their music and do their dances around the sacrifice. And they cut themselves. And they scream. And they shout. And they do everything that is possible. And nothing happens. And about evening time, and the time of evening sacrifice around 3 p.m., 
multiple times in Jewish culture. What happens? Elijah says, I'm going to do and I'm going to call upon my God. So he goes down and he builds an altar. 12 stones, 12 tribes of Israel, evangel family. We are going through history, history once again this morning because the New Testament, the power of the New Testament is vested and it starts in the Old Testament. You got to see New Testament through the lens uh, of the Old Testament. So you have Elijah bringing in the sacri sacrifice. He cuts the sacrifice in pieces, puts it on the altar. Now to prove that it is indeed God who sends the fire, what does Elijah do? He says, dig a ditch around the place of sacrifice, around the altar. So the people dig. And then he says, bring some buckets of water, gallons of water, and put it on the altar. So they, they are like astounded. Now we want fire to come. And this man is doing directly the opposite. If you want fire to come, you better have your fire logs dry. You, you need to, you know, put that tinder thing. You need to take the lighter out and light it. But he's doing directly the opposite. He says, bring water, put it on the sacrifice, put it on the altar, put it on the wood. And they come and do it three times. And it is soaking wet. And Elijah stands back. And a 63 word prayer, he prays to the living God. And he says, Father, if you have called me, and if you are the true and the living God, send your fire and consume the sacrifice. And even before he finishes his prayer, evangel family, the fire of God falls from heaven and burns the sacrifice up. And people see, people of Israel see. And what happens, just as Valerie read in verse 40, they go down on their face and they acknowledge that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is Jehovah and Jehovah alone. Jehovah and Jehovah alone. This morning, God is saying, if you want my fire to come up and burn the sacrifice that you have put on the altar of your life, you are coming into church with praise, with worship. Your situation is not good, but you still come into church. Your situation is not good, but you still turn on the TV. Your situation is not good. Nobody knows about it. When they look at your face, they say, wow, this guy is doing good. This guy is doing very well. This person is doing very well because she looks so happy. He looks so happy only deep down you know what is dragging you down and it has been dragging you down this morning God is saying you have come to church with an altar built in your life and with sacrifices of praise and worship and I'm about to send my fire down in the service before the service is down and burn up that sacrifice that you have put and God is saying this morning that even as I do that the miracles that you so much desire in your life, I will not withhold. I will not withhold. I will not withhold from my people. And in the Old Testament, the fire of God comes and they acknowledge that Jehovah God is God alone. And what does Elijah do? Elijah goes and tells the evil king Ahab, people are evil out in the world, including in Christendom. But God is so merciful. God is so gracious. He gives how many chances? So many chances. Chance after chance after chance after chance. Why? Because your heart may turn to me. Because you may see my love and turn to me. Because you may begin to listen to my word. Because you may start to put my word in practice. Chance after chance after chance. And what happens? So the drought is about to end. Why? Because Elijah takes the sword and chops off the neck of 800 of the false prophets, 800 false prophets, he chops their head off. And God is pleased that this worship is removed from the land and he's about to send rain. So Elijah on top of Mount Carmel goes down and starts praying, Lord send the rain, Lord send the rain, Lord send the rain. Tells the servant, take a look, is any cloud coming? Seven times he goes up and down, you can read that. Seven times he says, yes there is a cloud, the size of the fist of a man. And the clouds come in after a period of three years and it begins to rain. And he tells King Ahab, King Ahab, take your chariot and go back into the city because it's going to rain and rain and rain. And Elijah, even as he prays, the rain starts falling. Another notable miracle, do read this uh, chapter, is before Ahab reaches the city, Elijah reaches the city. Ahab is on the chariot, Elijah walks. But God transforms him and transports him from here into the city. So miracle after miracle after miracle on Mount Carmel. 
Amen. Praise God. Supernatural stuff happening on top of Mount Carmel. But in chapter 19, so this is the background. Chapter 19 is one of the lowest points for Elijah. In chapter 18, he saw what? Fire coming down from heaven and building and burning up the sacrifice. He saw in chapter 18 how God gave him the anointing to chop the necks of all of those false prophets who were into Baal worship and baby sacrifice. Let's read chapter 19 verses 1 to 4 please. And he had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with help and with ill, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Amen. Powerful four verses, chapter 19. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, is hitting rock bottom. How many of us has hit rock bottom and still come up? How many of us has gone through those tough times? How many of us have gone through the valleys? This is one of the greatest prophets of Old Testament, hitting rock bottom. What happens? Verse 1, King Ahab goes and tells Jezebel all that Elijah has done. King Ahab, a self-willed evil king. Jezebel, self-willed evil woman. But difference in characteristics. If you go down the story, and I'm not going to go down the story today, you will see how Ahab reacts when he does not get what he wants. When you are self-willed, you want that thing. And no matter what, you want that thing. Amen? So how does Ahab react? You can read it later on. When he does not get the thing that he wants, he begins to sulk like a baby. He goes back to his house. He does not eat anything. He makes everybody to know that he's going through a problem. I'm going through a difficulty. I'm the man. I'm the woman. I'm not getting what I want. Therefore, all of you better know that this is how it is. I'm unhappy. Everybody gets to know you are unhappy. Self-willed, not God-willed. Failure begins. When self will comes in. On the other side, Jezebel, again self will. If she wants something, unlike King Ahab, who if he does not get it, gets to sulk. Queen Jezebel, if she wants something, she goes out and gets it and hurts people and does everything that is required to get it. Self will. Jesus name. Thank you Lord that your presence is here. God is saying that I'm ministering to somebody this morning. I'm ministering to somebody this morning. And every principality, every power, every witchcraft, every spirit of darkness which is haunting you, which is pestering you, I speak to it in the name of Jesus that you will not come against this child anymore in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God. Faith on the word of God. Faith on the word of God. The word of God is true. The word of God is his word. The word of God is alive. If you base your faith on the word of God, which says, by his stripes I were healed, no matter what the doctors report, you will come through. Unless, of course, your father decides that time is up and you better come up to be with me. That is a different thing altogether. But otherwise, every time the enemy attacks... It says, you have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. The psychiatrist says, sorry, no chance. You won't be able to make it. All the drugs you need to give, Valium, I don't know what all drugs, for him to be soft and sleepy and in a happy mood. But your word of God says that he's not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. You better believe in this word. And as you believe in this word, you will begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles just like Jesus did. And in all humility, I say this morning that I've seen most of the miracles. 
The last trip I made on that prayer walk with Pastor Paul and the rest of them, I told you about that story where the demoniac came into the place and how the demon was delivered. Different kinds of demons exist, but this morning God is saying, I want to give you power over the demons, but it will only come when you have faith, as small as a mustard seed, and fasting and praying is what will give you the power. What am I saying this morning? Jesus comes down into the valley and does the miracle, but the disciples never learn that the God of the mountain is still God in the valley till after Pentecost. They still don't get it that the God of the mountain is God in the valley. They have seen all kind of miracle in John chapter 2. First, God turns water into wine and then he goes on to heal the leper and then he goes on to heal the, uh, ask, raise the dead. And then he goes on to do every kind of miracle, setting people free from demons, healing the sick, leper, the man with the withered hand, all kinds of miracles. And in Matthew chapter 14, let's spend some time there. Matthew chapter 14 verses 15 to 21, please. Matthew 14, 15 to 21. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. And Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here five, but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. A very notable miracle, a very, very notable miracle. Five thousand people he feeds from a few loaves of bread and fish. A miracle of multiplication. Many of you who have come this morning are struggling with your finances. And God says, I am the God of the mountain. I am the God of the valley. I am the God of multiplication. If I could multiply bread and fish to feed the 5,000 and then women and then children. And then you have fragments left over. This morning God is saying to somebody here in this tabernacle and watching online that I'm about to multiply the finances that you have. But bring it to a place where there is a need. Bring it to a place where there is a need. What's the principle we see here? God is teaching you something this morning. God is saying, bring in your finances where there is a need. When the Spirit of God moves, bring in your finances and put it to a need. Maybe it's in the church. Maybe it's for somebody in the community. I know of people this morning who are struggling to go to school. person came up to me. The mother and the son, fifth standard, cannot go to sixth standard because fifth standard around 13,000 fees is pending. Amen. There are many people like that in the church, in the community. I'm not asking you to, uh, you know, put in that money. If God leads you to, after the service, do contact me. Amen. Where there is a need, you may have very less, but the principle of God, where there is a need, sow into it if God leads you. Don't think it's like magic. You put in two and you get back four. It doesn't work that way. Let me tell you now itself. But where there is a need and if the Spirit of God leads you, come talk to me, sow into that. And what will happen? God will turn it down and increase it to feed the 5,000 and then the women and then the children and then 12 basket full. Not prosperity gospel. Two plus two equal to four. Eleven. The Holy Spirit leads you. Principle of God stands. 5,000 was fed. In verses 22, what happens? Jesus says to the disciples, Disciples, go on to the other side on the boat. And what does Jesus do? He goes up the mountain to pray on his own. And he spends time in prayer. And he spends time in prayer. God is telling somebody today, Faith like a mustard seed. Fasting and praying. Believe in the word of God. 
and you need to spend time in prayer just like I did to my father. Because when you spend that time, not corporate prayer, corporate prayer is good. Friday evening power prayer time, many of you have joined and there are signs and there are wonders and there are miracles which are happening and I would that you send the link to all of your relatives, all of your friends because God is moving in that. But this morning God is saying, I'm looking at personal prayer. Early in the morning, one hour, one hour, no matter what happens, one hour of prayer with the living God. And I practice what I preach. And every time, around 30 to 40 minutes, when I hit that mark of that one hour prayer, the anointing of God comes down. And all the problems and all the issues, all the things that are weighing me down disappears. And there are plans and there are purposes and there are whispers. Do this, do this, do this, do this. All the things are chalked out. And by the time I come out from that prayer closet, Things have fallen into place and the day looks beautiful and ready for victory for his child. And God is saying this morning, one of the basic things of Christian life is spending that one hour in prayer. You say you don't have time, make time. Because when you make time and put that as first, everything else falls into place. You have tried everything else. You are running helter-skelter. You want two jobs. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to study. You want to come first in class. But somebody has told you that you are dumb. You cannot study. I'm giving you a solution for that. One hour of prayer. You have tried everything else. Nothing is working. Right? Your difficulty continues. You are not able to understand your books. Somebody has told you that there are bricks in your head. You can't understand a thing. One hour of prayer with the living God. One hour of prayer with the living God. One hour of prayer with the living God. You may go to sleep at 12, but get up at 4 a.m. in the morning and spend time with him. By the time the prayer time is over, you will be up and running like an eagle. You will be refreshed. The refreshing comes from the living God, not from anywhere else. Amen. So God is saying some of the principles he's reminding us this morning for that miracle to happen in your life this morning. Spend time in prayer. Believe on my word. It is my word, living word. Fast and pray. Have faith and do not doubt. Simple messages. And it is on this that God fed the 5,000. God fed the 5,000. And what happens? And after that, there is a storm and the boat is on the storm. The disciples are crossing over. There is a big storm and the boat is going up and down. And in the middle of the night, Peter, James, John, everybody hanging on for dear life crossing in the boat, they see somebody walking on the water and coming and they are frightened and they say, it's a ghost, it's a ghost coming on that water, it's a ghost, it's a ghost and they are screaming their heads off. And as it comes nearby, they see that it's Jesus walking in and, and, and Peter says, Lord, is that you? The Lord says, yes. And Peter says, he's always a bold guy. We want bold people in the church to ask for bold things from God because many a time the answer doesn't come because you are still in doubt. Ask for bold things this morning because towards the end of the service, we're going to spend about five minutes even as Pastor Candy comes and worships. Ask for bold things this morning. Ask for bold things this morning. Bold things which you think cannot happen. The walls of Jericho is about to come down. Ask for bold things this morning. Bold things, bold things, bold things. Make you the head of a big business. Make you the head and not the tail. Bold things. This morning God is saying, ask and I will do. Ask and I will do, says the living God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. The glory of God. And as Peter says, God, I want to come. God says, come on over, son. And he goes out and he starts walking. And many a time, this is what happens to Christians every time. They start well through the trouble. They're going through. Their wives are looking, whoa, my husband is handling this like, whoa, that is the reason I married him. Yes. Just as she finishes that, this fellow takes his eyes off Jesus, looks at all the situation around him, and just like Peter starts sinking. This morning, somebody is in that situation. God is saying, I'm going to reverse that. But you need to ask for bold things. And that was another miracle. So God of the mountain... Is God in the valley? Is God of the sea? Is God of the storm? Is God of the weather? Because the moment they go back into the boat, everything becomes still. Amen? 
So we saw Elijah. We saw Jesus. Mount of Transfiguration. Moses. Moses knew God of the Valley and we close now. Was a God of the God of the mountain is God of the valley as well. And Moses led the people through a howling wilderness for 40 years for the glory of God. And miracles happen every single day. Every single day. Every single day. Because Moses knew that the God of the mountain is God in the valley. God of the mountain is God in the valley. Amen. So he led them through signs and wonders. This morning, the question is, do you know him truly as the God of the mountains? And also the God of the Mali. If you do, then get ready for the miraculous to flow. If you do, then get ready for his glory to come down. If you do, then get ready for his anointing to come. If you do, then get ready for the fire of the living God to come down into your life. Enough is enough. You and I are Christians. You and I are called as Christians by his name. We are identified as followers of Jesus. And Jesus this morning says, I am the one who fed the 5,000. I am the one who raised the dead. I am the one who calmed the sea. I am the one who made the withered hands straight. I am the healer. And if I am all of those things, and I am that I am is saying this morning, ask of me and you shall receive, but ask bold. He not only wants to heal you, he not only wants to heal you, but he wants to revive you this morning. 